Accuracy is key when building for BTE. Get it wrong and you can have inaccurate and sometimes warped buildings, which is not a good way to go about building the Earth. Structures like Mont Saint Michel and the Eiffel Tower took incredible effort and precision to get correct, and for the Eiffel Tower specifically took months of meticulous plotting to get correct. These builds, along with the rest of the buildings built by the builders of BTE, all used one command, a command that allows the real world to come into Minecraft. That command is slash TPLL. TPLL allows you to take specific points from the real world and find that same point in Minecraft. With this, this opens an infinite amount of opportunities, allowing this project to flourish. But for many coming into this project, it may seem like a daunting task. This command requires effort to do well, and that is what this video is for. This video will teach you about TPLL, what it is, and how to use it. This is BT Explained TPLL. Originally, there was no need for a specialized command like TPLL. Back when the project used the acri-rectangular projection in the early months, latitude and longitude coordinates mass exactly to in-game coordinates. All that was required was the adjusting of the decimal place, and a simple slash TP command sends you to the correct point. This also meant that many buildings built in-game came out perfectly straight, which today is an extreme rarity. There are only a few places around the world today that are like this, which for experienced builders always looks off after building thousands of tilted and warped structures. Along with this, many early builders didn't completely know about this teleport system, and built instead using the brick outlines of OSM. OSM is a map of the world, created by people like you, and free to use. Users add real-world building outlines into this database, along with other additions such as roads, paths, and natural parks. Think of it as the map version of Wikipedia. This database is incredibly comprehensive, with the majority of the known world already being mapped in one way or another. Seattle? Yep. Every house in Fiji? Yes. A random desert village deep in Libya? Absolutely. The devotion of some of these mappers is insane. However, the thing about these maps is that they exist to be a simple representation of the globe, but not an entirely accurate one. These plotters usually go off of a 2D projection of Google Maps, which if you have ever built in a third world country, you know that it is never a perfect way to plot points. This means that OSM outlines are never perfect, and its accuracy can vary. In Seattle, for example, the OSM outlines are only one block off, most often in the same orientation. But in places such as Africa, outlines can be so off that they can become impossible to use, to the point that build teams physically remove them from their world. This famous image of an outline in Japan shows this idea perfectly. The outline is so bloated it would make any attempt to build the structure it is outlining futile. However, brick outlines can be slightly useful as being a rough guide on approximately where a building should be, and could be used as a way to double check a TPLL outline is correct. And don't get me started on the OSM roads. Those are terrible. Due to the fact that they do not have marked width. Like, what the actual hell. But how exactly do you use TPLL? TPLL uses coordinates gained from Google Maps and other mapping sources and transfers it into the in-game coordinates, specifically designed for Build the Earth's projection, Dimaxian edited. Thanks to massive developments by the dev team and a very convenient update by Google Maps, collecting and transmitting points into Minecraft is incredibly easy. Let me explain to you how it works. The first thing you have to do is to get a set of coordinates. Most likely you will do this from Google Maps, which is the easiest. To get coordinates, simply right click where you'd like to get a point and click the first option, which should look like a set of numbers. There you go, you have now gotten your coordinates. Now that you have the coordinates, you now need to use the fabled command. Once in game, all you have to do is type in the command slash TPLL and paste in the coordinates you copied, and the game will calculate where that point is in game and teleport you to it. It's that simple. Using this, you can locate any place anywhere around the globe, allowing you to not only see what the terrain looks like, but also see any progress the many build teams have made. For many new members, this command could be crucial to looking at the vast progress BT has made, but its functionality goes far beyond that. In the past, there was also a second command called slash CSTPLL, 
which had the same functionality as TPIO and was exclusive to servers. Its existence was because of a lack of permission editing for the slash TPLL command, which meant anyone who joined the server could teleport anywhere and load immense numbers of useless chunks, which if done enough, would overload the server to the point of endlessly crashing. Today, it is mostly obsolete, but it doesn't matter which command you use as they both get you to the same in-game coordinates. Once there, you can mark that block with wool or some other block and then get to plotting more points. This incredibly fast process allows skilled veterans of the project to plot hundreds to over a thousand points an hour, and speeds up construction of otherwise tedious builds such as roads exponentially. TPL allows you to directly translate real world points into Minecraft, allowing for truly accurate builds to become a reality. But like many other things in life, too much TPLL can end up being harmful to an overall build. One of the skills that every user learns over their tenure in BTE is to properly use the gift that is TPLL, to know when to use it and how to neaten up its mistakes, when they do arrive. TPLL may be easy to learn, but it takes time to master. But luckily, many easy, minor adjustments can be made to your TPLL usage that can make your builds look professional, while still being accurate to real life. The first trick is to know when to manually adjust your points to make parallel and cleaner buildings. Due to the fact that Minecraft plots in 1 meter increments, the points made by TPLL can often be right at the corner of blocks. A point difference of mere centimeters can mean a whole meter of difference in Minecraft. Due to this, sometimes completely equal walls can end up being different lengths in-game. Adding on to the sometimes awkward angles because of the projection, this can lead to accurately plotted outlines not being completely equal to the geometry of its real-world counterpart. The way to fix this is when plotting a square or rectangular building, you can move an outlying point to be equal to its opposite corner point. With this, not only will the builds look better, it will be easier to build as the opposite wall length should be the exact same length meaning that there will not be any inconsistencies when adding windows or other details to a build. The second trick is to plot missing or difficult points by using the geometry of already plotted points. This trick works wonders in areas of a lot of rectangular buildings and a lot of trees, which always block your vision of the full buildings. As always, Google Maps trees suck. In many cases, you may not be able to collect the coordinates for one corner, and this is where the trick comes into play. By using the geometric trick I just talked about, you can find the fourth point by copying in the already plotted walls. As you can see here, a corner is covered by a Google Earth tree, but since we already have three points, we can just mirror one side of the build and find the fourth, making a perfect rectangle for you to build on. Though, sometimes the locations you wish to build on don't have good data. Since most of the world doesn't have 3D, there will be moments where you would only have 2D Google data, and even then, the quality of that can depend on the location. In a place like rural America, the satellite quality is still decent, so finding the corners of the structures will still be easy enough. But in other areas, such as most of Africa, the data can be incredibly hard to decipher, which means that you'll still have to take some strategies to collect points. The first thing is to try and find any corners of the structure you wish to plot. In many cases, the satellite view isn't top-down, so the structures will look slanted. Whatever you do, do not plot the roof. Try and find any points on the ground and plot those instead. If you can find three, you can use a geometric to find a fourth, if the building is rectangular. If you can only find two, either due to shadows, trees, or otherwise terrible picture quality, you can at the very least estimate the proportions of your builds from images online and go from there. TPLL is a must-have tool for every builder in BTE. It is the only accurate way to successfully recreate the earth, from skyscrapers to roads to even the terrain itself. This video just talks about plotting points for structures and roads, but this could also be used to create terrain from thin air, which will be explained in detail in another video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content just like this one. Links to our Discord and socials are in the description, and until next time, see you later.